So on election day, this is what we like to see, people at the polls voting. It's the core of what our democracy stands for, and the more people who vote, theoretically, the better and more fair the representation there will be for all of us. Dr. Annie Johnson Benefil lives and breathes that philosophy as president of the League of Women Voters of Houston. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Camaro, for inviting me. I'm oh. just so excited. This well, is election season. No. What else is there? <laughs> I, know. I know you're excited all year <laughs> round, but when it comes to this time of the year, it really is. Uh, so we have the League of Women Voters here at the station doing phone banks uh, every election day. For those who are not familiar with the League, what is the League's responsibility? What's your vision? What's your purpose? The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan organization that engages in the civic space. And our primary focus, our mission is to empower voters, and we empower voters through the voter registration process and voter education by doing study and advocacy, putting candidate forms together, and our signature work, the voter's guide. Yeah. So I figured I'd get that plug in. Absolutely. And defend a democracy. That means that we advocate for voting rights. Voting rights is at the forefront, because the idea, if you don't have voting rights, there are no other rights that you can enjoy in a democratic society. So we advocate for that. We want voters to be informed in the electorate so they can make decisions that will be reflective of their wishes and desires for a good democracy. And it's important to note that you do not make an effort to tell people how to vote, but rather to educate them on ways that they can vote. We just want to make sure they have fact-based information to know what the rules of the game are in a democratic system. So we want to tell them, when an election take place, what's the time frame, early voting, we educate them about mail-in ballots, how to request one, how to fill one out. We have videotapes of telling you how to fill it out. In terms of getting it into the place, the deadline dates, that's very important. And how to voters should make a plan for voting, mm -hmm. how to engage in the political process. So we want them to have information to make an informed decision in a representative democracy. I was talking to someone uh, earlier about the Harris County ballot, and they were t this is the, it's the longest ballot maybe in the country, certainly in the state. So people really need to do their homework ahead of time, and, and your guide is a good way to at least have some advanced information, not only about the candidates, but the uh, issues that are out there as well. Yes, the guide actually facilitates. The voters can take this document into the polling location to click off and check off the candidates they want, to compare the candidates, decide which candidate they're going to vote for in terms of the issues and propositions as well, and it, all the way down the ballot. I would suggest that you do your work, homework, before you go to the polling location because then you will be so taken aback with the length yeah. of the ballot. Yeah. If you already know who you're going to vote for based on this piece of paper that you're going to take in, you can develop a sample ballot. You can use the guide as a reference and then you could do a sample ballot and print it out and take it in. But that means you have to have access to a printer. Right. And, but let's talk about your, your website. Uh, okay. for a second. I thought it was a tremendous source of information. There's a lot to see, but it's clean. You can see it's focused. So it's pretty easy to look for and find the information you want to see. And what was really useful to me was a section called 411. That 411 section there, right? Vote 411. As a part of it, you can go on and put your address in, and you can find out instantly who the candidates are in your area that will be on your ballot, tell you which district you're in as well. Then you go to those races, and you can find out who's on there, information about the candidates, what they stand for, those who responded to the lead questionnaire, and you can fill out that information. So you've obviously put a lot of effort into making it easy to navigate to get as much information as possible. And the wonderful thing about that, Kimberell, is that we are, we have a committed core of volunteers. All this work is done, is actually undertaken by a team of people who vote, who work on the Voter's Guide team. And they make the phone calls, we send out the emails, we send out the questionnaires, and then we follow up with numerous phone calls. We call the Democratic Party, the Republican Party, we wait until after the elections take place and the conventions have taken place for the Green Party and Libertarian Party to get their candidates and they're also included on the, on, in the voter's guide. So you guys send out questionnaires to everybody who decides they want to run. All the candidates have questionnaires, correct? We get a list of all the candidates who are on the ballot in any capacity okay. and we send our questionnaire out to them. I noticed a bunch of folk didn't fill anything out. I mean, the governor didn't, the lieutenant governor didn't, the secretary of state did. They give you any reason why they don't fill it out? They just simply ignore. Really? Uh, we will call and follow up, and we just simply don't get a response. 
Interesting. Because they can go in and put in the information themselves right. on our website the way it's set up. Right. So there are numerous candidates who simply do not. We've asked them. We make numerous contacts with them in an effort to try to make sure they respond because we feel like voters have a right to right. know the information. Right. They have a right to connect with the candidates who are running for office. They are public servants who are seeking elective office and they will make decisions that affect people's lives. So people who don't fill it out, I, you know, psychologically, I think something different about people who decide not to fill it out. But that's just me. Okay, okay. so uh, can't finish this interview without acknowledging the fact that it took 100 years, but you are the first African-American president of this league. What does that mean to you? It, it, in terms of being able to be in this position? Well, it means that the league has gone through a tremendous transformation in its 102 year history that it has attempted to include individuals and there's an outreach effort um, it, you know, the league does have a history as, as the history of the league was that it was predominantly an upper class white woman organization but in recent, in more recent, in more contemporary times the outreach has been to include I want, as president of the League One of Women Voters, I want it to be reflective and representative of the demographics in Harris County and in the Houston area. So our board is very, we have a diverse board, people from all different races, ethnicities, and nationality, re and sexuality represented on our board. So the League is in transition, just like many organizations in our history have had to go through a transitional process to get where it is. Well, congratulations to you for what you're doing. Congratulations to the League and all the League is doing is non profit, a non-profit, non-partisan organization uh, trying to help us prepare for Election Day. So, just ahead, speaking of Election Day, thank you very much. Look forward to you being. One more thing, yes. One more thing. The League of Women Voters, in co collaboration with its partners on October 22nd, is having a Get Out the Vote rally in Emancipation Park from 1 to 4 o'clock. We've partnered with many organizations in terms of communities of color to actually get people out to vote, to get excited, because early voting starts October 24th and goes through November 4th. So we want people to go out and demonstrate their support, not just in terms of the rally, but the enthusiasm for the electoral process. Voting is essential Got it. in the electoral process. October 22nd, be there. I'll put that on the website as well. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey,